I can go first on dogs just because I've kind of already alluded to it. Go for um, it. It was Haynes King for uh, Georgia Tech. Um, I already read off his stats earlier, but I will provide you with a refresher. Um, Haynes King only had six pass attempts, but he completed all six of them for 32 yards and a touchdown. Um, the really exceptional uh, performance that he put out was on the ground. He had 20 carries for 93 yards and a rushing touchdown, um, which in that offense with how it's been established this year, like 93 yards isn't out of the ordinary, but like we mentioned earlier with the way that Georgia tech won and the time of possession and controlling the line of scrimmage and just keeping the ball out of Cam Ward's hands, um, Buster Faulkner and Haynes King and Aaron Philo and on it, it they just they, they executed it almost as perfectly as you could, even despite some key injuries. I mean, I know that Jamal Haynes had to come out of the game at one point. I'm pretty sure Eric Singleton also had to come out of the game at one point. Like the backfield was just dropping like flies and situationally for the quarterback to be able to step up and keep supplementing the run game like that in a game where you need the run game to work, uh, I think speaks volumes. So, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, we were saying earlier in the video, if you're watching the short cut-up version, go watch the long video. I promise it's worth it. You'll love it. Um, But, you know, as far as... I'm not the biggest fan of the two-quarterback system, but if you're going to do it, that is how you do it. Yeah. I think it, it meshed perfectly... Um, you know, both guys got in their rhythm. They they played to their strengths. It's not like you were switching them back and forth, having go, both guys do the same thing. You know, they're they're doing what they needed to do, and and it was it when it was firing it on all cylinders. It was pretty unstoppable, at least for Miami that day. Yep. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Good job, Haynes. Woo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, you got yours. Yeah. Um... Drew, um, I feel as though I'm copying you somewhat because my guy did the exact same thing. Kind of a lackluster day through the air, but on the ground, he just absolutely ate. Um, that would be Jalen Milrow, the Alabama Crimson Tide quarterback. They they not, won this game. Not exactly the same. Well, I mean, it's not the same, but it's it's ridiculous. The same philosophy. Same philosophy, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. Different different ex different on the execution, yes. but <laughs> not, not the same. Not the same. <laughs> same no the same vibe. Me right. Same quality. Same type of player. Same prestige. Same same quality of one Jalen two. That's yeah. one one A, one, one B. A, one B. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If I'm starting a team, I'm choosing Haynes King. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Milro went 12 of 18 through the air, 109 yards, but the real story is on the ground. 12 carries, 185 rushing yards, four touchdowns, including a 72-yard touchdown run. Just Damn. unbelievable. Killed him. I mean, I want to know what I want to see if he runs the 40 at, at the, the combine. Genuinely, he looks like the fastest person on the field at any time at the quarterback position. That that kind of weapon, when it works correctly, is quite literally unstoppable. Yep. Especially when you have a downfield threat like Ryan Williams and guys out wide that can stretch the field, and you know you have to respect that as a DB. I mean, he there's nobody to account for the the quarterback, and if he can do that, and they can continue to do that, that's pretty much unbeatable in my opinion. Yeah. 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 Sadly, Brandon, I don't think you're going to get your wish because he does have that quality tape already. Where he looks like the fashion. He, he's not. I would if I were him, and I would not risk that. I no. just want to be see honest. Him run it, dude. I would just love I to know what the number the is because he'd break the yeah. combine record for quarterbacks. Probably. Absolutely, he would. Um, I mean, I'm sure they could clock him on field. You know, I know they yeah. have that advanced yeah. te- technology. You can see how fast they're going in game, yeah. but that's probably the closest we'll get. He's not going to risk going out there pulling a hammy, doing something fluky oh. no. on it. I wouldn't. I would not. I'd so. At this point, if I'm Milrow, I don't even throw. I just show up and interview. That's the, the trend that's going that's in. Fair. If you have enough good tape, why? Why, why, why do it? And he's got good tape. Yeah. Um, I mean, hey, just saying, Milrow's a freak, but Haynes King didn't throw an incompletion all day. So. Hey, now. 
<laughs> he's, he's got him there. <laughs> yeah, you got me. Oh, All man, right. that's good stuff. <laughs> you can't argue that 100% completion rate on the day. I got, I got no retort. There you go. Yeah. I rest my case. <laughs> Brandon, which oh, <laughs> I'll wrap it because I could have taken either of those two guys. I was kind of like, oh, I'll take Milrow. We'll see what Noah does. But um, take a three thirty keep... slot guy. I'm, I'm keeping it. Minute. I'm I'm picking a nooner here. Actually, I'm keeping it in the SEC. Um, pretty good stat line out of Quinn Ewers. To be honest with you, I know Florida's secondary was banged up, but look, the way I see it is that if Texas is going to win out and do anything in this postseason, it's going to be on the back of Quinn Ewers. Um, their their biggest struggle in the Georgia game was, um, you know, he got pressured a lot and did not have a very good performance, even got benched at one point in favor for Arch Manning. In the second quarter, even, he came back and didn't do really do much. He did more in the second half than he did in the first half, but still. Um, quarterback play in today's college football is paramount. Um, and he did not have the stat line on the ground like those two other gentlemen that we just talked about did. However, he had 333 yards through the air and five touchdowns. So, I mean, you know, it, Florida secondary was banged up. Like I said, it was pretty much barbecue chicken all day. But going out there executing against a SEC opponent where, you know, they just hung with Georgia. You, Florida's frisky. You can let them hang with you if you let them. They, they, will, let, they will hang with you if you let them. Um, so just going ahead and putting that away and, and continuing to look good, I think, is um, why he's my pick, and we'll see what they can do for the rest of the season. Um, he's going to be, like I said, he's going to be big in their continued success um, in the SEC, the SEC championship and beyond. Um, looking forward to a and at the end of the season. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's it for dogs, unless y'all have... Yes, sir. One other I do not have anything else. So, um, the only honestly mention would be the South Carolina front seven for containing the legend that is Diego Pavia. But I give it to old Mrs. Front Seven. How about right. that? I'll be a good sport. You, yeah. Y'all see that video? Y'all see that video where uh, it was like two guys doing swimming at the same time, untouched. No, I did see the video. Go check Twitter. I send it to y'all, but it's it's embarrassing, honestly. And I mean, Georgia's O line didn't look very good, but at the same time, Ole Miss's front seven looked unstoppable. I, yeah. I did see a video where Ole Miss rushed four, and all four of them got in on the tackle behind the line of scrimmage. It might have been that one, it or maybe it's like two separate instances. Who knows? It, it, that could be the case, honestly. I mean, with the, how things went. Genuinely, the way that the offensive line was blocking on that play, I'm like, this had to have been a screen, right? Like, you're Hopefully. telling me all five of them got beat? There's as, no way. With as often as but they it, call screens, it could have been a screen. They call the, screens but, all yeah. the damn time. Carson handed the ball off. That's uh, the part that pisses me uh, off. Don't remind me. Okay, Sorry all right. I'm, um, I had an idea for a <laughs> thumbnail. So I'm making it right now. Um, oh, good. It's gonna, the crack one the iron's it's gonna hot. Say, it's going to say, depressed Georgia fans. Mm. Discuss. <laughs> Amen. That's a good uh, one. Yeah. Fuck yeah, it. but honorable mention to them. <laughs> um, they, they kicked our fucking asses, so congratulations. Yes. They made us look childish. Yes. Um, and, you know, maybe the philosophy is go out and buy the best front seven that money can buy you. I mean, hey. I'm not even being a sore loser. Like genuinely, in today's college football, at this point, seems like that's probably a very, very sound strategy. I yeah. mean, he can't throw the ball if he doesn't have time to throw the ball. Mm -mm. No, there sound was a few like plays. It. There was a few plays that looked like damn near. You know, I'm playing in CAA and Gage Eight. You know, you yep. walk all of them up, you send eight guys. Yep. yep. And somebody, there's not enough blockers to account and. Mm -hmm can't complete a pass because you've got a guy in your face as soon as the ball hits your hands. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, okay. But enough about that game. I, I could say. talk about it for a couple hours if you let me. So <laughs> no. we'll move on. We'll move Thank on. God. 